If you like birds and you live in Southern Oregon, I have good news for you. Our region is blessed with a wide variety of avian life. These baby great horned owls are called owlets. Their nest is within sight of Bear Creek. This bird is called a flicker. Flickers don't excavate their own nests. They take over the nest used last year by a woodpecker. Woodpeckers don't reuse their nests, preferring to make a new one each year. This flicker's nest is in a snag. A snag is a tree that's dead but is still standing. Southern Oregon is blessed with several species of hummingbirds. This is one of them. This little jewel is an emerald hummingbird, its name coming from its bright, shining green color. Near the Rogue River, just across from Tuvel Park, great blue herons are building their nests. These birds are usually solitary, but they gather when raising their young in an area called a rookery. You may have seen these birds before. These are mallard ducks. In this pair, the male mallard has the bright green head, while the hen is a beautiful brown color. The male duck is called a drake. Ducks are an example of waterfowl, since so much of their habitat needs are met in the water. Notice how the hen keeps dipping her head in the water. Mallard ducks feed off the plants that are under the water surface. Also along Bear Creek, we spot a raptor, a red-tailed hawk. From up here, it can spot prey on the ground. Red-tailed hawks have very sharp vision, which enables them to spot small prey at a distance. Now, this individual is blind in one eye, so it's missing a major adaptation of its species. It still has needle-sharp talons, though. This allows hawks to grab and kill their prey. This hawk can't live on its own with its blind eye. Its role is now education by wildlife images. Deep in the forest at dusk, this great horned owl adult was keeping its sharp eyes on us. The owl's day is just beginning, preparing for a hunt in the darkness of nighttime. This rufous-sided towhee is perched in a riparian zone along Bear Creek. The name towhee comes from the bird's call. These were once known as spotted towhees. They have a wide range in North America. They're found in woodlands, forest edges, and gardens, any place where there's low scrubby growth. This purple finch was located near a bird feeder at Coyote Trails Nature Center. A common sight in my neighborhood this morning dove is perched on a branch. The name comes from the melancholy sound it makes. Morning doves are often seen on the ground, but they can fly up too. Look at all the holes in this living tree, each of them holding an acorn. This is a granary, a storage place produced by acorn woodpeckers. This is their winter food supply. Each niche is hollowed out with the woodpecker's beak. They fit the acorns of just the right size into the right hole. Uh, he's got a red head. Really? Oh, the one on that reed out there. This downy woodpecker is pecking out insects from a cottonwood tree. Woodpeckers do a number of things helpful to people. These are Canada geese. Yes, the same birds that grace the sky on their epic thousand-mile-plus migrations. These are the same species, but they don't migrate. Life for them is good enough here in southern Oregon, so they stay here, and this is where they raise their young. Geese and water go together on ponds, lakes, and even on the fast-moving Rogue River. Canada geese seem to float effortlessly. 
they appear to be most at home on or near water. Canada geese have long necks elevating their heads high. When a flock is feeding, some of the geese stand guard, alerting the others of approaching danger. This much smaller bird has a short beak of a seed eater. During the warmer months, southern Oregon is blessed with the turkey vulture. Its bald red head gives the turkey vulture its name. Here you see a turkey vulture doing what it does best, riding the updrafts of air, soaring with infrequent flapping of its wings. Turkey vultures do what all vultures do. It eats dead animals, helping the decomposing process. They gather in large groups and migrate to Mexico in the winter. That's not unlike seagulls. They frequent the southern Oregon coast, seen flying here at Brookings. Seagulls are highly adaptable, eating dead animals on the beach, small living creatures, and even human garbage. I've seen a seagull eat bacon. Human food, of course, is not good for them. The edge of the ocean, like the Pacific Ocean on the Oregon coast, provides the ideal habitat for seagulls. They share the beach with these shorebirds. This house sparrow finds seeds even at a curb, while this young white crowned sparrow dines on an earthworm. This field of fiddle neck weeds draws sparrows and finches, both seed eaters. The seed eater. Here's a well-named bird, a barn owl. They are often found nesting in barns during the day. They hunt at night. While nocturnal birds often go unseen, there are many species to be enjoyed during the day. You just need to look up or look down on the water. Through a dense fog, these white pelicans were seen on Upper Klamath Lake. This was the first time I saw this type of feeding behavior. White pelicans are often seen in this area. While they don't let you get too close, they're not especially shy of people. That allowed me to get this exciting shot. Seen at the water's edge, this slate-colored junco prepares to fly off. Now this sparrow stays put feeling safe inside the dense vegetation that grows in the riparian zone. Every year in the spring, I'm blessed with a visit by Oregon juncos. They're back from their winter migration, and they're always hungry. I'm never sure what they find to eat, but they're very busy feeding on something. These are ring-necked ducks, and the adult males have the black back and the white plumage on their breast. They're further distinguished by the white stripes on their bills. Like most ducks, these are at home in the water, especially the still waters of ponds and lakes. These ring-necked ducks are enjoying their float in Grant's Pass, where an old industrial site was turned into a series of ponds for wildlife habitat. Volunteers developed the park around these ponds. When I first saw these ducks, I thought they were coots, but a closer look at their bills changed my mind. In the same pond, I saw this green-winged teal. You don't have to leave southern Oregon to see red-tailed hawks or any of the many birds that make their homes here. Our region hosts a great variety of avian life, some of them migratory and others living here permanently. All of them fill important roles and enrich our lives.